Uh, welcome to the seminar on the design of cold form steel exterior wall connections. I'm pleased to be here with you today and uh, again thank you for joining. I want to start by encouraging you to submit any questions you may have as we go through the presentation. Uh, feel free to include the slide number and I'll try to get to all of your questions or comments during our three question and answer sessions. So we'll be broken up into three sections. The, um, the middle section is actually the shortest of the three. Um, and there's kind of a lot to cover, so, but uh, I have faith that we'll get through it. So let's get started. Okay, so design of cold form steel exterior wall connections. So here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about code required loading and uh, building movements, so movements of the base building that we need to accommodate, typical wall framing configurations, uh, loading on the wall framing connections, and then the design of the connections, both engineered and proprietary. And what I mean by proprietary are um, off-the-shelf uh, clips that you can purchase from uh, steel manufacturers. Just a little note about the terminology that I'll be using. Um, one, you know, cold form steel, uh, light gauge, uh, they mean the same thing to me during this discussion. And, um, and so you'll, use, you'll hear me refer to it in, in both ways. And then um, gauge versus meal versus mill. Um, so a lot of uh, so, uh, the gauge versus mill, there's basically um, 10 gauge is equivalent to 118 mils. And there's, um, it, it, when you work in the structural, uh, either load bearing and then most likely exterior, um, talking in gauge or mills doesn't really matter. But if you are in work in the non-structural world, 20 gauge, actually there's a 20 gauge structural and a 20 gauge non-structural. So, um, so I will use them interchangeably because it's just for whatever reason, it's uh, hard for me to switch from talking in gauges to mills. Um, but just so you know, that is the equivalent. Okay, so let's start with loading. Um, so uh, as with everything else that we're designing as structural engineers, we've got our dead load, possibly a live load, wind load, and a seismic load. So let's start with the dead load. Um, first, we have the uh, weight of the wall itself. So that's the um, full weight of the wall. Uh, and this can vary significantly. So if I have a metal panel finish exterior wall, it could be 10 pounds per square foot. Um, but if I have four inches of brick, it could be 50 pounds per square foot. So that's a five times difference in the exterior wall design and, uh, and then what your connections would need to support. So the requirements for exterior wall framing can vary significantly depending on what your finishes are. The other thing that um, you could have to design your exterior wall for is the dead loads of the building. Um, now, typically in most exterior wall design, the exterior wall is designed in such a way that the um, building loads do not impart a load onto the wall. So this is either done by, you know, maybe bypass condition where there's vertical slots in a clip, or if, if it's a platform frame where you've got a wall going floor to that slab to floor slab, then there's a gap between the um, structure and the floor that allows the, um, the wall or the, the floor to deflect relative to the wall. But if you were to come up with a case where you were not, did not have that gap, then essentially your wall becomes a bearing wall and you're taking the building loads. Similarly with live loading, um, in general, we're not designing exterior cold form steel, you know, non-load bearing wall framing for um, live loads, but if the um, detailing isn't done right, um, you could have uh, live load conditions. Uh, wind loading. So um, the 2021 uh, International Building Code has um, recently come out. Um, however, I'm not aware of any jurisdictions who have adopted it yet. So we're still talking the 2018 International Building Code. Um, and actually, the 2020 International Building Code also adopted ASC 7-16. So um, ASC 7, Chapter 30, you want to use the components and cladding loads. That's what Chapter 30 is. Um, your corner, it's important to note that your corner wind pressures uh, can be quite significant. So um, on if your um, height of your, uh, I mean, if, you, if your height of your structure is 60 feet or less, the corner wound loans aren't necessarily, you know, they can be up to 27% higher. But if you have a taller building, um, your mid-rise to, to uh, larger, you're talking about the potential corner zones being 200% higher. So this could change how you address your design. Um, but it's important to, to understand that. 
The loads decrease with the increased tributary area. So the load, the wind load that you design your wall stud to, especially because the, um, the code allows you to take the uh, span um, and then multiply by the span divided by three for your area. Um, but if you're talking about a connection at the bottom of the wall or a clip at the edge of a slab, um, those loads are uh, less, or that, that area is less, which means the high load is higher. The, um, for your components and cladding, the suction load is typically governs. So in that sense, the wind load is usually constant over the height of the wall. So usually, no matter whether you're on the first floor or the top floor, you're designing for the same suction wind pressure. 